Hot off the heels of my Mafia 3 benchmark video, I've jumped headfirst into Gears of War 4, which I might add is thankfully a significantly better quality game. Gears of War 4 is exciting for a few reasons, most notably of which is the fact that it should be the first game to truly leverage the capabilities of the Unreal Engine 4. The game is built on the 4.11 version, which is a more recent build featuring full DirectX 12 support. Asynchronous compute has been leveraged heavily, so it'll be interesting to see how the AMD and NVIDIA GPUs compare. Both AMD and NVIDIA do have game-ready drivers for Gears of War 4, though I should point out that NVIDIA work closely with developer The Coalition on the game. Therefore, we expect the GeForce graphics cards might have an advantage over their Radeon rivals, at least initially. This is the first DirectX 12 title that hasn't been tailored to AMD's hardware. Hitman and Deus Ex come to mind, for example, so again, it'll be interesting to see how things pan out. For testing, we stuck to the built-in benchmark, which seems to do a good job of replicating actual gameplay. The ultra quality preset was enabled with async turned on. Each time we changed the resolution or reloaded the game with a different graphics card, the ultra preset needed to be reapplied, so this was done before each run. As usual, the latest display drivers were installed for testing and my Core i7-6700K test rig was used. Before we get into the benchmark results, here's a quick look at the built-in benchmark test. Those of you rocking a previous generation GPU will be pretty happy with the performance at 1080p with the game maxed out. Even the little old GTX 950 maintained over 30fps for an average of 40. We know the GTX 960 isn't particularly fast at the Nvidia reference clock speeds and this does hand the R9 380 the win. Still at 17% faster, the 380 was a good bit faster at the stock clocks. Bumping the resolution up to 1440p, we see that it takes the i9-380X to stay above the dreaded 30fps. For a smoother, more consistent experience, the GTX 970 or i9-390 will be required. Meanwhile, the Fury X and GTX 980 Ti closely battled, each rendering over 60fps on average. As you might expect, 4K gaming on a single GPU isn't possible using previous generation hardware. The Fury X, despite its limited 4GB frame buffer, was king here with an average of 34fps. Nvidia's current generation lineup, which is yet to feature any truly affordable GPUs, has no trouble delivering over 60fps at all times at 1080p. The RX 480 and 470 were both very impressive as well. The RX 460 struggled, but given the quality settings, the results are still very impressive. 1440p performance in Gears of War 4 is still very good on the GTX 1063GB and RX 470, both delivering nice, playable performance. Still, for those of you who can't bear to dip below 60fps, the GTX 1070 will be required. Now at 4K, gamers can scrape by with the GTX 1070, though the 1080's performance was noticeably better. Of course, if you can afford to meet Nvidia's extreme pricing demands for the Titan X, then a smooth 4K experience can be had. Here it is guys, all 19 GPUs side by side at 1080p. The results have been discussed, but this graph makes it easy to compare AMD and Nvidia's previous generation lineup with their current gear. Here are the 1440p results. If you need time to study them, feel free to pause the video. Alternatively, you can easily find your way back here using the video index in the description. Finally here at 4K, we see there are just a few select GPUs capable of playable performance. Meanwhile, you can't even select the 4K resolution with the graphics card limited to a 2GB frame buffer, which is probably a good thing. I bet you guys thought we were done. Well, not quite yet. Let's see what kind of impact Async Compute does or doesn't have on performance. As you can see, the GTX 1060 didn't gain much from having Async enabled, and this has become quite a common theme. 
you could draw the conclusion that the Pascal GPUs can't take advantage of async compute or they simply don't need to as they're already operating at or near maximum efficiency. From the red team we have the RX 480 which gained around 6% more performance with async compute enabled when looking at the minimum frame rates. So a nice little boost for AMD here and that little extra performance helped to close the gap on the GTX 1060. So what about CPU performance? Let's take a look at CPU utilization on the Core i7 test machine running the Titan X. For the purpose of these tests I've dropped the clock speed down to 3.5GHz with turbo disabled. At this frequency utilization sat around 40% in the benchmark though at times did rise up as high as 70%. This was in line with actual gameplay as by large CPU utilization sat between 30 and 40%. Given these findings there shouldn't be a noticeable difference in performance between say a Core i5 and a Core i7 processor and the game should also be playable using a Core i3. So there you have it, Gears of War 4 is a great looking game and more importantly is very well optimized for PC hardware. Although Nvidia has had a lot to do with the development of the game it's nice to see it running so well in AMD hardware as well. It was also great to find such strong performance not only on the latest gen hardware but also on previous generation stuff as well. At this point I consider Gears of War 4 to be a true DirectX 12 title, it's certainly one of the best looking and most polished examples we have so far. As I've found in the past when playing around with async compute support in games there's little to no benefit for Nvidia while AMD gains 5-10% to more performance. Thanks to the game's DirectX 12 support driver overhead doesn't appear to be an issue for AMD. This not only helps boost performance at resolutions such as 1080p, but it means load on the CPU has also been reduced. As such, the CPU doesn't appear to be worked that hard, and for the most part, with the Core 7 6700K clocked down and locked at 3.5GHz, utilization sat just at 40%. So what do you guys think? How many of you are going to get into Gears of War 4? Let me know in the comments, I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers guys for joining me for another episode of Hardware Unbox. To those of you that already support the channel, thank you so much, it's truly appreciated. And to those of you that would like to support the channel directly, I do have Amazon links and a Patreon link in the video description below. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys next time.